Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this talk, which will be delivered by Tassos Sextos. I am Emma Rose, Faculty Projects Manager from the Faculty's Industrial Liaison Office. If you have any questions for our speaker today, there will be a Q&A at the end of the presentation. Please submit any questions you have in the Q&A tab found at the bottom of your Zoom screen. This talk is part of our Faculty Research Showcase event. The purpose of this week-long event is to demonstrate the breadth of research capability we have in engineering at Bristol, to provide stimulus for a conversation and hopefully for future collaboration. I will now hand you over to Tassos, who will talk about the new UCRIC National Facility for Soil Foundation Structure Interaction, Research Challenges and Business Opportunities. Thank you. Thanks very much, Emma, and thanks to everyone who has actually uh, contributed in uh, preparing this webinar, as well as to all the attendees that uh, invest some, some of their time to see what we're building uh, currently in Bristol. Uh, so probably the best way to start with is the, you know, a throwback to 1987, when the first table was set up in Bristol. Actually, this was one of the first in Europe and certainly the first one in the UK. Following the vision of late Professor Roy Severn, you can also see uh, Professor Colin Taylor um, overseeing uh, the first test that took place um, at the University of Bristol. Uh, the next milestone, uh, pretty much around 20 years later, was um, um, effectively leading to the great upgrade of the shaking table um, that moved into its current uh, purpose-built uh, lab within the Queen's Building of the Engineering Faculty, uh, following a 20 million investment of um, the Blade development. Um, this took place in uh, 2005, like I said, and opened by Her Majesty the Queen and His Royal Highness, uh, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. Um, it's nice just to share this, this photo that the Duke really spent nearly an hour around looking at Blade and was fascinated, asked many, many questions, according to Colin, who was um, there at the time. And of course, he had very good engineering knowledge because he was a naval officer himself. And legend says that Her Majesty formally inaugurated the event by pressing the shaking table button for the first time. So the next major milestone uh, following this lab, uh, for which I, I'm going to just uh, briefly mention a couple of technical uh, uh, aspects, just because the new development is a complementary uh, uh, equipment and uh, laboratory uh, to the existing one. Uh, the, the next uh, important milestone was um, the U Creek which is a great framework um, that I'm going to talk about it uh, later on and took uh, place and it was initiated five years ago. The existing lab um, involves this 6DOF 3 by 3 platform supported by um, a hydraulic actuators by taking a quick look at the participants. Some of us have already visited, so you know what we're doing. But overall, it's, it's a, uh, a table that can accommodate up to 15 tons payload. Uh, an acceleration up to 2G at full payload with a velocity both horizontal and vertical around 1.2 meters per second and a big displacement of plus minus 15 centimeters. So this is pretty much what we're using as a baseline, as a reference, now that I'll be talking to you about the new lab because we, we aim to see the new lab and the existing lab as one entity, as one network of complementary um, equipment and uh, capabilities. U Creek, like I mentioned, is um, this um, great consortium uh, alliance of uh, 13 facilities around the UK, involving also six observatories for uh, smart and digital um, citizen infrastructure, the V simulators, virtual simulators of Exeter and Bath that joined last year, and it's uh, about 140 million pounds investment. The aim of U Creek, through which this lab has uh, been constructed, was to develop the new generation of large scale testing facilities to support uh, more resilient, safer and net zero uh, infrastructure across the UK and, and the globe. And as part of it, this is the facility that I'd like to present to you today, which as you can expect, it started from, uh, as you can expect, started from a single uh, slide, from a single piece of paper, and then gradually evolved to what, what we have now. Uh, that was a 12 million uh, investment as part of the uh, UCREEK uh, overall funding. And of course, the most important milestone in this um, effort was the allocation of the site to be constructed because without it, it was impossible really to iterate among different preliminary designs of the construction. So it's really 
it has been quite challenging because when the site was allocated, actually time was ticking, uh, the clock was ticking and time was running. So we had to uh, perform this uh, design and construction in the minimum possible way. But today we are very pleased to share with you that uh, in um, an allocation which is pretty much 30 minutes drive from the University of Bristol, 10 minutes from Bristol Airport, we've been allocated this site and this is exactly where our facility is being delivered this June. Uh, in the middle of the VET campus at uh, Langford, um, and we're really grateful for all our colleagues at Langford campus or the University of Bristol that help us, even tolerated the construction of this period and help us deliver it on time, as I'm going to show you. This is the time lapse, starting really from, from the humble site, uh, building uh, the foundation first, and then uh, the, the large reaction mass going over the ground and gradually um, building the, um, the frame um, to host the equipment that is being installed uh, as we speak. In fact, the, the large shaking table that I'm going to be talking to you about is being installed tomorrow. So we're a, bit, a little bit unlucky that I don't have to show you, I can't show you real photos and videos from that installment, but I think that we've reached the stage that everything is now being installed. However, the challenge was in terms of construction, how to build something that is not just world-class um, and providing capabilities for starting and dynamic uh, large-scale soil structure interaction testing. That's easy to visualize. The, the problem is how to construct it by respecting also all sorts of other limitations involving, of course, um, cost and time frame and safety and how also to create something that is technically feasible and financially viable for the future. That clearly relates to the type of uh, equipment that one would like to uh, install within the lab, to the performance of this equipment that relates back to the reaction mass that is needed. This has a certain cost, certain timing for construction. We have to respect vibration limits because we're in a building within a, a built environment and so forth. At the same time, we have to adjust with industrial needs. This is not the 12 million to, to develop something that only researchers would like to use, but something that would be highly desirable from the industrial uh, partners in the UK and uh, worldwide. So on top of that, as a bonus, we had the, to, to match this multi-parametric uh, objective um, within a global pandemic. But the outcome of this has been actually the outcome of a co-designed or co-produced laboratory with our uh, industrial partners. So after uh, two years of consultations and one and a half year of construction, one and a half year it is one half year of design and one and a half year of construction. We're able today to uh, show you what we have in this, uh, this lab. Um, this lab effectively, I'm gonna use a, 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 a slide that shows from, from a drone footage uh, during the um, uh, reaction mass construction, uh, just to show you the size of uh, what we're building and describe the main pieces of equipment that we've got in the lab. And then I will proceed by describing what we can actually do ideally together um, uh, to exploit them. So one important thing is uh, six by four meters, 50 tons by axial shaking table, which is actually 2.5 if you include the yo. We'll talk about it later on. We've got a soil pit at the size of a, of a decent room, six by five by four meters, uh, along with its actuators and a very high performance, small, but very, very strong, the baby monster, let's say hexabot, uh, that can do a very high acceleration testing uh, for equipment. Um, this combined use, of course, involves a very large reaction mass of 2,300 tons, pretty much. And this, just to give you context, is around seven times more the reaction mass that has been used in the existing lab for the shaking table that was smaller, but also was seismically isolated. So this is just to get a, a size, a feeling of what we're doing. And some construction photos you can see in terms of relative scale, with the pit and the, the pit for the shaking table and the location for the hexapod. An overview from the top of the crane uh, where we could uh, we can identify the spaces and the reaction floor um, and the storage around uh, the several facilities. Things that you don't see at the time is the visualization system. I'll talk about it later on. Is also the reaction frame around the pit through which we can apply forces by means of the static and dynamic actuators. Um, but it gives you a fairly good overview of uh, what we've got. This is a very recent picture to, that shows from the um, uh, east entrance, the soil pit 
uh, the back is the shaking table and the very back the location for the hexapod. There is some decent space so that we can test the specimens up to the height of uh, nine meters. We don't need to exhaust them, but it's, it's a decent space in terms of height for uh, several um, different tests. So a few words about the shaking table. Like I said, it's a six by four meters shaking table. Um, we have very large payload. This is three times more, more than three times the existing payload of the uh, current um, shaking table. And it's capable of meeting the Belcor curve. The Belcor curve is a very demanding curve for those who are um, pretty involved and that facilitates component testing mainly for the nuclear industry that are very demanding in terms of amplitude and in terms of frequencies. Uh, it can accommodate a peak acceleration, like I said, of 2G and also maximum frequency of 50 Hertz. This has deemed very, very important in case that we aim to place a large shear stack on top of the shaking table because that's the threshold frequency through which waves can propagate through the soil. So we can also do soil structure interaction analysis by means of a box on the table and not just within the pit. Um, here you can see for context uh, in terms of size, some snapshots from the um, online, one of the online inspections we did uh, with servo test um, before, like I said, it's going to be delivered and installed tomorrow. And there are three different ways we aim to use the shaking table. One of course is to do large scale foundation component structural testing, which is basically what we have been doing in the past anyway, for the, that's the existing table, but you can be inspired by what I'm, I'm showing and then just think bigger and stronger and heavier and faster. Okay, um, so these are some examples of uh, testings on masonry walls, tests on nuclear cores. That's actually a, an awarded project by uh, Colin Taylor and Adam Crew, involving many other people. Yeah, you can see the citations involving the um, um, uh, modeling of a graphite core with its components and thousands of sensors, very, very bespoke kind of testing. So that's one of the things that we test in the existing lab and we'll be testing in the new lab. You can see examples here of um, tests that we have been doing in the existing lab to produce technologies for protecting seismically important structures, uh, either with a high tech solution or with a low tech solution. That's this example. It's a low tech uh, solution of a foundation that it's sliding, it's failing in a smart way. You're gonna see it in a second right now uh, to act as a fuse so that life is protected for very important uh, uh, pieces of equipment or for protecting you know, uh, sensitive lives like in schools or hospitals and so forth. We can also consider use of a large uh, shaking table um, with the uh, mobilization of um, the existing soil box, which is a flexible shear stack. For those who are not involved, just I'm gonna show you an example of what we did, we are doing in the existing lab as part of a European project. You can see here, this is a box that is constructed by a series of aluminum and rubber that, that's filled in with soil and can take the mode shape of the soil so that there are no reflecting wave, uh, waves at the boundaries of the box. And while we shake that um, from the, by means of the, of the table, uh, we can monitor within the soil the dynamic pressures, accelerations, displacements, and also sorts of important information that we need um, to assess uh, within embedded infrastructure. This is important for integral abutments, but it is also important for pipelines. That's another test we did in a framework of another European project with a pipeline um, uh, buried within two different soils and uh, uh, the use of fiber optics to measure the development of axial compression at the boundaries of the interface, if you like, of um, geological and um, uh, geomorphological um, topographic uh, nonlinearities. Um, so that's uh, pretty much what we have been doing, but now we can think also of a bigger box that was around three meters. Uh, a new box will be of the size of seven meters, let's say extending a little bit as I can deliver from um, the dimensions of the exist of the new table that has the size of six by four with a height of 1.2 to 1.4 um, uh, meters. This will give us the opportunity to test even larger uh, problems in let's say 1D excitation, 2D wave planar um, problems uh, that involve buried infrastructure 
um, and soil structure interaction studies. The third way to use the shaking table, which is also extrapolation of what we have already been doing, is to use it in the framework of hybrid testing. Hybrid testing, in short, is effectively substruct substructuring a problem into uh, numerical components and experimental components. So typically, we model what we know, how it performs, and we test what we don't know. Um, and this has been very popular around the world with the challenge nowadays to, is to, being to do real-time hybrid simulation. There has been a framework following the US NIS framework of the previous decade. Uh, there was a UK NIS framework, uh, the uh, counterpart in, in Europe, um, involving Bristol, Oxford, and Cambridge. But now we have also uh, tested in a hybrid sense other uh, sensitive industrial infrastructure by splitting, um, just show you an example, a building um, effectively testing the connecting pipe of a nuclear pressurized excuse me, natural gas pressurization station um, that has been uh, excited by uh, different ground motions um, uh, at the edges of the pipe, studying effectively through this uh, physical and numerical substructuring, um, the uh, stresses that develop um, at the bend, which is the most uh, sensitive um, part of a buried infrastructure under um, uh, ground motion. And these are just some examples of the test, hybrid test that involve the University of Patras, that's where you see the video, uh, also the University, uh, our University of Bristol and um, uh, University of Toronto in Canada. So apart from hybrid testing uh, within the existing lab, this also gives us the opportunity to, lead, to, to link the tables themselves, the two of them, or link that table with the soil pit, or link the three of them with the existing lab, or just do geographically distributed testing in the sense that I've just pre presented. So these are three sets of equipment plus the existing table in the current lab, plus all the interconnected facilities that we can use to facilitate uh, large scale testing around the globe. In terms of visualization, we'll be setting up uh, something similar to what we've got in the existing lab. Uh, where we have, as you can see here, a set of, uh, I mean, apart from the standard uh, sensors, a set of uh, infrared cameras where we have more than 3,000, um, we're able to capture more than 3,000 uh, simultaneous uh, sensors um, uh, measurements from um, 1D accelerometers and 3D infrared markers that measure uh, displacements in space and then use them um, with a visualization system to see the motion of displacement in time and in space. So this is pretty much what we're aimed to install on top of the pit and on top of the shaking table uh, to be able to monitor uh, real time the performance of the structure. Few words about the soil pit. This again is a snapshot. It's, uh, it's the size of a room, as I said, six by five by four. You can see the gantry crane, which is three times stronger than the one in the existing lab. And effectively here we have the ability to mount uh, actuators either directly on the concrete walls of the soil pit or by building a reaction frame around the soil pit uh, so that the actuators can push against. We already have two one mega newton pseudostatic actuators, one one meter stroke and another dynamic um, actuator with half a meter stroke. But this uh, we're uh, um, uh, hoping to enrich them uh, pretty soon. They're not very expensive, you know, the cost is from 60 to 80K per, per item. So this will be gradually build a pool of um, uh, very useful actuators. Plus we've got actuators from the existing lab that are uh, lower capacity, but whenever we need more points to apply load, we can, we can just mobilize them. Um, and of course we have the ability to adjust the direction of the actuators on the specific test that we can do. The 10G hexapod or 15G, 13G, depending actually on the, on the capacity, on the, um, on the payload that is used. It is uh, this very, very interesting uh, set of equipment for um, um, industrial testing under very high accelerations. You can consider an equipment that is qualified for seismic testing. You can consider, you can think about aeronautics mechanical applications, you can think about uh, seismic accelerations at the floor level, which are always much higher as spectral accelerations compared to big ground acceleration, a really wide range of industrial applications. Here is um, a photo of the hexapod as it has already been installed 
at the existing laboratory. And in fact, it's under operation, full operation. You can see here also the monitoring system and the um, um, control system. Um, the technical specifications are here, but I think I mostly explained. Please note that it's a 60 OF um, shaking table. Um, therefore, it's really um, providing unique, really unique opportunities to test things at a very, very high, high demand. And of course, it meets perfectly well and simultaneously in two directions, the demands for uh, nuclear uh, equipment qualification and testing. Now, what can we do with all these uh, pieces of kit? We can do many things, expand what we are already been doing, work further with you. Uh, the main axis that we're currently working on, like I said, involves soil structure interaction, studies with piles and pile groups, uh, caisson, large caissons, integral bridges, embankments, abutments, retaining walls, railway applications, offshore applications, clean energy, uh, nuclear industry, all sorts of dynamic loading, either applied at the base, considering shaking table, or from top to bottom considering actuators um, are used with uh, the aid of a reaction frame. So some examples, for instance, um, offshore wind turbines with and without water um, in that uh, soil pit also has appropriate drainage. Clearly, of course, somebody would start with uh, um, uh, saturated uh, conditions, which are easier to test. Uh, however, uh, there is opportunity to build uh, uh, the turbines at appropriate scale with a monopile or with a jacket uh, pile foundation um, and test them dynamically um, by means of this reaction frame. We've got the opportunity also to test by different configuration um, and measure something that is really very rare in a, in a well-controlled laboratory environment. Kinematic pile group interaction, define interaction factors, static and dynamic that are very relevant to the construction of large buildings in soft soils. We can also test integral bridges at large scale, as you can see here. Please note that we've got the ability to push, to apply the actuator within a trench that has been designed exactly for this purpose. And if we really want to also uh, apply the load in an eccentric way, we can place two actuators, one on top of the other, to be able to create the appropriate moment uh, so that we have several different ways to um, uh, test um, such a, an abutment. Uh, in both cases, in all cases that involve the pit and the soil box, we will be able to measure within the soil uh, with load cells and with other smart measurements in case of water flow with appropriate monitoring schemes. I mean, the sky is the limit. What somebody would like to test and, and, and monitor within and around the soil. We can also uh, consider the case of uh, dynamic loads that are applied in the sense of um, a, a railway passing on top of a track. We can consider a large um, uh, velocities, a velocity trains or uh, passing through the um, uh, embankment or uh, slower passing trains, but running on much weaker and more vulnerable uh, Victorian embankments in the UK. Therefore, um, soil, rail track interaction can be studied in a very efficient way by means of the, of the soil pit. This is um, just another example to show you the versatility of the various pieces of equipment that we've got in the lab. Or we can consider testing things that are very important. For example, in the UK, there has been a large interest around small modular reactors, uh, but really it's not very clear how they would behave or how what the performance and the regulations should be in terms of introducing the influence of soil conditions. So within the lab, um, either by means of the shaking table or within the pit, we can test uh, various configurations, um, uh, specific uh, specimens that relate to SMRs. Uh, by saying this, I have concluded the history, the current uh, uh, challenges and the opportunities that open us. Uh, open for us. I'm just going to uh, finish with a couple of final slides thanking um, the executive board, everybody that has worked on this. That's, I'm just presenting that clearly it's, it's a group effort. I would like to thank uh, the Dean, Professor Ian Bond, for um, uh, leading the effort and being the, uh, responsible for uh, this delivery. And also all the members of the executive board, uh, uh, Simon Neal, Sylvia Elliott, uh, Adam Crew, George Milonakis, Theo Trivonas, Kerry Carley, Greg Campbell, Ben Moore, and of course, Patrick Telly, who has been 
um, one of the key people in delivering uh, this facility in time and within uh, within the cost that we had prescribed pretty much. I would also like to thank the people who have worked in the group, like Nick Alexander, Flavia, De Luca, Rafael Derisi, and uh, Edin Ebrahim, Andrea Dayambra, and others that have worked with us to design Paul Vardanica, of course, Dimitris Karamitros, who I shouldn't forget. Uh, they have all worked together to design this uh, versatile lab. And of course, the people who have been involved in design from the estates, the capital portfolio board, particularly Luke Everett, who has been the heart, amazing Luke Everett, running this, Rob Powell, uh, Cora Kirkowski and um, Peter Fenton that has been um, designing the um, lab from the side of um, Stride Treglum. With that, I would like to thank you very much for your um, presence today and just to prompt you to visit us in our website so that you receive updates. We are really very, very happy to have the opportunity to work with you in this existing lab. Please stay in tuned, send us your ideas, send us your, your suggestions, and we'll find a way to get it done together. Thank you. Many thanks, Tassos. It's a very um, interesting talk there. Um, a reminder to the audience that if you do have any questions, please feel free to submit them through the, uh, through the uh, link at the bottom of your Zoom um, page. Uh, a first question that's just come in, uh, Tassos, uh, when will the facility be open um, for, for industry to use? Uh, thanks very much, Emma. Uh, of course, the facility is being delivered this June. We would need about six to eight months for appropriate validation, commissioning, and uh, testing of all the actuators and the data acquisition systems. So we hope that by January 1st, 2021, we'll be able to open up for actual testing. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, and another one that's, that's just come in, um, Will the facility be mainly research focused or commercially focused? Well, it has uh, been designed to serve both purposes. Um, we are researchers, but we're also working with the industry. And in fact, like I said, this has been a facility that is, was co-designed, co-produced. So it has to co-run with, with the industry. Um, the versatility of the equipment clearly shows that we can do even simultaneously research work on one end and then industrial work on another end. We just need to bear in mind that all these tests require some time for preparation, some time for uh, you know, uh, taking the specimens off the tables or off the pit. So uh, this requires very good coordination, but overall it's, it's a dual facility for both research and commercial work. Great, thank you. Uh, a question about the infrared cameras. Uh, what do the infrared cameras measure? And if they measure displacement, what is the resolution of them? It's about half a millimeter, the resolution. And the purpose of measuring displacements is to be able to, to, to construct in, in a visual way, the way the, the movement of every point of the specimen that is actually monitored on during the test. As I said, this can be thousands of points. Typically, we, we get away with 20 or 30 points or, or so. Uh, and this is for visualization and validation purposes. We also have accelerometers, like I said, that clearly we place them at the most important uh, parts of the specimen to be able to um, monitor the actual dynamic response. Great, thank you. Do you have any experiments or projects already lined up for when the facility opens or are there any potential projects that are in development? Well, we do. I don't know how much I can disclose actually during a webinar, but I can say that we do have one that we're hoping to link the gap between getting the facility starting this June and opening it in January. So there is one project which has been specifically designed to do this nice first pilot study as you can expect, we have to start with something that is simpler before we build something that's more complicated. But we think that next, early next year, we'll be able to deliver uh, more complicated things. So without disclosing what exactly we're going to be doing next year, we do have uh, three projects under review uh, that we hope that um, they involve large-scale testing, of course, and we hope that they'll get funded. Brilliant. Um, can the shaking table be used in underground structures such as mines or tunnels? Uh, yes, in combination of the soil box. So, of course, ah, okay, I will, I will reverse the question. Depends what would be the loading. 
If the loading is earthquake, so seismic, uh, seismic loading, earthquake excitation, then we would create, we will mimic something like what we want to test within the soil box and we will place the box on the shaking table. If the test, the, the loading is either um, static or let's say 3D, then we would probably use the soil pit and construct an embedded infrastructure within the soil pit, which of course it is easier for us to involve sandy soils rather than clay. Clay would be an extreme case for the lab because it would take, it would be more complicated uh, to, to empty the pit. Uh, however, depending on the test, we would have to find the appropriate piece of equipment. Which one of the two would be better? Great, thank you. Uh, what were the performance constraints impo imposed by placing the facility within the campus without any vibration isolation? And has the size of the reaction mass completely alleviated this? We hope so. Uh, yes, that's a very important question. The performance objectives that you need to meet in such an occasion is the objectives that you would have in any built environment, which are vibrations prescribed by local regulations in the UK and the international literature and refer not only to the highest excitation that would disturb, let's say, somebody who is working in a nearby office, but also relates to the duration of the excitation. Sometimes we can tolerate an excitation, you know, for a couple of seconds or, or, or a minute, but we don't want to experience that all day long. So these have been taken care very, very carefully, and they have actually been driving the design. What would the cost of testing be for industry when they want, when they, uh, want to use the facility? Uh, that would, it depends, of course. Clearly, we do have a business case and daily rates, but these are modular because they also relate to the preparation that is needed, to the post-processing that is also needed, how many days are we going to use the facilities, and so forth. So for every particular project based on the idea, we would be able to quote. Of course, we do have our business model, but because it is modular, it would depend on the appropriate uh, test. Great, thank you. Uh, if there's any further questions, I don't have any available to me in the Q&A at the moment, but I'll give, oh, another one's just come through. Um, is it possible to construct a reaction frame above the shaking table so the table can be used as a static loading system for a specimen reacted against the reaction frame? What does this mean? What does it mean by a, a 2.5D shaking table? Well, like I said, the base idea is to build the reaction frame around the pit because this is the way we can use the actuators. And in parallel, we can use the actuators uh, pushing against the concrete boundaries of the pit itself. Now, having a reaction frame around the shaking table depends again on the problem we have to study. But the, the most important thing is the payload, the size, the scale. The scale is, is super important for deciding exactly what we're gonna do. And clearly the type of loading the direction of loading and whether we should prioritize the table or the actuators. But because the question was very smart and interesting, I'm, I'll be very happy to answer it offline by email. Feel free Good. to contact us. Yeah, we can, we can definitely arrange that. Um, there doesn't seem to be any further questions. I'll give it another couple of seconds. Um, if anybody did want to ask anything further. No, it doesn't look like it. At, oh, no, nope. here we go. There's another one that's just come in. Uh, the non-linearities of the soil can be studied, un studied under strong ground motions. If so, what kind of scenarios can be assessed? Well, non-linearity depends on the intensity of ground motion and soil properties, as we all know, and refer to both stiffness and damping. So by having the ability to test uh, within the pit and within, uh, through the shaking table within the soil box. We have actually done it in the past. We can drive soil to a nonlinear response. And that of course can measure the uh, shear strains and calculate all the properties uh, that evolve in time effectively as, as uh, soil becomes more and more nonlinear. The applications of such a study, of course, is more complicated soil structure interaction phenomena of large infrastructure that are exposed to very high seismic risk and the corresponding loading. Thank you. 
So I think we'll bring the session to a close now. Um, thank you everybody for attending and for your questions. I'd also uh, like to thank our speaker today, Tasso Sextos. In the current climate as it is, uh, online is the only way that we can really do such an event. Uh, and we appreciate it's not as interactive as we'd like and, we're, and, and as we're normally used to. However, if what you've heard today or throughout the week has captured your interest, please do get in touch with us. Our industrial liaison office is here to connect you to our academics and students and contact details will be sent after the event. Many thanks again and goodbye. Thank you all.